Hello, everybody. This is Olga Mandodri. I would like to share with you um, a very interesting uh, trip to Mexico City. For a long time, um, I, I dreamt basically to visit uh, pyramids uh, near Mexico City. Um, that's their brochure. I bought like a small book. And the name of the place is uh, Teotihuacan. And um, so anyway, when because whenever I traveled to Mexico, it would be always Mac, uh, the peninsula, uh, Yucatan Peninsula. And I never had the chance to actually go to the uh, to that part of the Mexico, because the Chichen Itza, Uxmal, Tulum, uh, Cozumel, this is all Yucatan Peninsula. So that was the destination. But this time I was lucky enough uh, to go in September, it's still September, and visit uh, these incredible pyramids. But I visited, of course, not only pyramids, but the Mexico City, which is about 20 plus million people and it has absolutely amazing anthropological museum so this um, short presentation I would like to uh, basically devote to the anthropological museum and the treasures which I found there and um, how it is connected to the ancient Mayan culture of India uh, and as you know probably maybe you don't I study Vastu Shastra I practice I teach and I design houses according to ancient teachings of design called Vastu Shastra, Vastu Vidya, also another term, Stafatya Veda. So several buildings are already built uh, in the United States and uh, several in Russia. So anyway, let's move forward. So let me switch to my PowerPoint presentation. So here we see the um, um, basically the first page. And I wanted to show you also that they have amazing in Mexico City marketplaces and the flower arrangements. They are absolutely geometrical and symmetrical and they have a, a very different way of presenting color and flowers in bouquets. So before um, I continue, I just wanted to show you this absolutely different. I have never seen anything like that in Europe or in US, but in Mexico and many more uh, different types of bouquets they have and prices are extremely affordable and this front uh, picture that is actually on the serpent head that is from the pyramid one of the pyramids of um, Teotihuacan okay so let's move forward so everything happened is in September so first, I, when I arrived, next day, I immediately went to um, Anthropological Museum, National Museum of Anthropology, Mexico City. And I signed up through Airbnb with a wonderful, wonderful guide, local guide. His name is Jose, and he has a PhD, and he is um, majored in anthropology. So the lecture he gave us, kind of uh, lecture all over uh, all the cultures, uh, just glimpses, but very deep ones. Um, it was three and a half hours, so that was just overwhelming, beautiful. And as you see here uh, on this mural, it's modern, of course, but it represents ancient look and myth or belief system of the peoples of um, Mesoamerica. And they say that there is a constantly fight is going on between the jaguar and the feathered serpent so the jaguar i bought the jaguar because i'll tell you why i'll make a sound so the jaguar is fighting with a serpent feathered serpent and jaguar is the deity of the night so he actually um, um, is uh, the deity of the night which keeps keeps safe ancient wisdom at night yeah so when the sun goes down the jaguar gets the power at the daytime that's why we see here uh, on this slide we see a moon so jaguar represents night so the moon is shining during the night and as you see there is a constellation there there is another uh, piece of information about it uh, feathered serpent is representing sun daylight so there is a constant 
fight between darkness and light. And as ancient people believed and they felt that for the fight to continue, it needs to be um, bloodshed, human blood actually. And so that blood is necessary to continue the life itself. Uh, so the, when the fight is going on, the universe is living. So I think it's, oh, I don't think it's actual blood, but I mean, they did it. Uh, and as we know, a lot of uh, um, incredible um, excavations were done. For example, I think it's all Max. No, Aztecs, they found like a bunch of um, um, hundreds actually of uh, human um, skulls um, mural in, in the specific temples. So they did do uh, human sacrifice. But I think the human blood is energy basically. So if we think about this metaphorically and about the universal fight, it means that the energy needed uh, for the fight or for, conti for continuous of the life. So anyway, let's move forward. So my first uh, incredible discovery for myself, it was the Olmec culture. So I went back actually a second time to, to the museum to make additional photographs and record certain things. So when I was um, in Turkey several years ago at Gobekli Tepe, I noticed something. So what I'm trying to say that this uh, in this um, auditorium where Olmec culture was represented, yeah, with these huge heads, uh, there is also this specific um, carving was uh, expositioned, and as you see, it, so there is a serpent again, and actually it's Olmec god Quetzalcoatl from La Venta. Tabasco, Mexico region. But my interest is this, this little bag, mysterious bag. So let's talk about it. So I searched online and of course it's not only me who observed that, but some other researchers. And I found, for example, this interesting article of Jasper Hamill. He's British and he's writing um, scientific uh, articles in different kinds. So he wrote in 2017 um, the noticed uh, the same thing about this little bag, mysterious bag. So he called his article mysterious handbags of the gods spotted in ancient sculptures around the world. So as you see here we, we have basically uh, this man with wings standing uh, holding pine cone and this little mysterious bag and this creature with human body, with eagle head, same thing, holds the um, mysterious bag and also pine cone. They're like blessing. Yeah. Some people say there is water in this container. It's not a bag. But um, for example, the Jasper Hamill, he said there is a belief that um, that is a bag holding seeds of all kind of possible um, plants. For the planet Earth, and so in the Bible, it was said that you know it was a deluge, and it mentioned in many other cultures that it was a huge deluge, and everything was underwater to save their food for people. This was the bag with the seeds of different kinds of plants. So that is kind of the myth, but we don't know, of course, if it's true or not. But I do believe in myths, as I think they are holding the essence of the ancient life. So what, what these two images, they, they could be somehow connected because this is all Assyrian ancient reliefs and now it's Iraq. And so these cultures, uh, they're connected, yeah, Assyria and Gobekli Tepe is not too far away. It's the south part of uh, um, Turkey. That's where I went also several years ago. And as you see, on this photograph, you see the same type of handbags, quote unquote. Yeah? And Gobekli Tepe was excavated not too many years ago, but uh, at this point, it's considered as one of the most ancient excavated um, temples. And so it has several uh, columns, carved columns, arranged in a specific order. 
and one of these columns has the same bags. So as we know, Urfa, that's where near Urfa this excavation was done of Gobekli Tepe. So Urfa is bar bordering also with you know Iraq and, and so basically it's the south part um, and possibly even 12,000 and a half um, 12,500 years ago, somehow maybe Gobekli Tepe belief system influenced Assyrians. That's possible. I don't know. But there is some connection. But how this were, appeared on the reliefs of Mesoamerica and Olmex, that is not clear. Nobody knows the answer to that question. So it's the other side of the globe and people carved the same type of relics, relics. So that is a big question. So there is something serious about this handbag. What is that? What is this for? Nobody knows at this point, but that actually captured my attention. Okay, let's move forward. Oh, here again. So I made actually a little video. Just I thought it's kind of interesting because to show you the exact location in the museum and the label which was next to this uh, um, artifact. But unfortunately everything is in um, Spanish language but um, the, my guide spoke English. So let's just listen a little bit. I speak Russian here for Russian people because I made exactly the same presentation in Russian So, but I didn't want to share the same in English. <laughs> который держит такой мешочек, который также у сирийцев и также в Губеклитепе также держит такой же прочный мешочек. И никто не знает, зачем он. И вот это культура Олмек. Ну, вот я нашла. So that was the uh, best uh, interesting artifact uh, of Olmex. So um, nobody knows. Hopefully we'll know. Now, interesting facts about uh, connection of ancient Maya of Mesoamerica and potentially Indians teachings of Brahmarishi Maya. Because there's a lot of people from India, they know that name Brahmarishi Mayan is in Mahabharata Ramayana, so it's a well-known name of this ancient architect with uh, incredible knowledge of sacred buildings and type of construction he would do for gods, for kings, and um, so by the way his daughter was uh, Mandodri and that's why I have this name. So I feel connection. So what is here uh, amazing to me? While this uh, lecture at the museum, Jose started kind of narrating certain information, which immediately triggered my memory in the relation to the ancient Indian um, system of beliefs, of the lifestyle, social hierarchy. So at this specific um, exposition here behind the glass, we see this five-stepped step pyramid and it shows the strict social hierarchy um, of the system which existed in Mayan culture of Mesoamerica. And so when uh, Jose was explaining who is who here, it immediately triggered um, my interest and connection to the old caste system in India, which is still somehow exists. Yeah? So here he said the first figure, the most important, is uh, basically uh, the religious person who is a priest. So we say we have Brahmins, right? The first caste level. Then in India we have Kshatriyas and teachers. So here the same, they have basically warriors on the second step of the pyramid of um, hierarchy. Then uh, they have um, trade people, merchants, same in India. Uh, then we have um, Shudras, for example, yeah. So first the Vaishya, then Shudra, and then untouchables. 
So five uh, steps here are the same. So they have also the workers, the uh, the low uh, niche of workers. So exactly a system of five levels of society, and they would strictly uh, condemn. Uh, mixing uh, between the layers of society. So you tell me why this is exactly uh, five uh, kind of layers of um, hierarchy and um, the ancient rule would not allow a mixture between. So that is very interesting. Okay, so that is number one connection between ancient Maya of Mesoamerica and the system in India. Yeah? So now, Jose was very proud, the anthropologist, to announce that only the Mayan culture of Mesoamerica used and invented, as he said, number zero. So I was like, wow, interesting. So I listened to him and then I said, may I ask a question? I asked him many questions. I don't think he was very happy about it, but I mean, he was cool, but still... Too many questions. And I said, you know, uh, I was in India many, many times, and um, I know that in India, in, you know, people think and they have uh, supporting literature, ancient uh, manuscripts, where um, they invented zero, where they actually started using it, not the Arabs and Babylonians, yeah, but in India, and probably it went from India to. Um, Arabian cultures and so they adopted the zero. He said, well, I don't know, but from 64 plus cultures of Mesoamerica, remember in India it's 100 plus cultures and languages also, but India is a huge country. And so Mesoamerica is Belize, Guatemala, Mexico, yeah? so it's much smaller part of their earth, but still they have 64 plus cultures and languages. So only the Mayan culture and Mayans used zero. Again, maybe Mayan from India came with his boat or maybe flew in the Vimana of ancient India um, engineers. Yeah, and they introduced this to um, Maya, to uh, ab Aboriginal people of uh, Mesoamerica. Of course, it's speculation, but it's very, very interesting speculation. So number two is we see uh, the correlation use of zero during those times. And then the next thing is the astronomy and astrology. So apparently Mayan, Mayans were incredible mathematicians, astrologers, and builders. So they would not build their buildings randomly. They would actually align them with uh, with cardinal directions or constellations as well. That's why they have shifts of specific pyramids, like Chichen Itza, for example, about 12 degrees shift. Yeah? And Teotihuacan, also same shift, about 12 degrees, not much, but there. Yeah? So um, that is an interesting uh, consideration as well, because according to uh, Vastu Shastra, it is very important how you locate and position your building on the planet Earth because it has to be aligned with the direction of movement of energy of the planet and cosmic energies. So kind of resonance if we properly uh, position our structure. So Mayans were aware of that, very much so. And Jose said that was the biggest thing they had in their knowledge. So in India, uh, specifically, uh, in South India, I know that it was a key for temple structures. So they would align with cardinal directions and also, I suspect, to some constellations. That's why we, sh we see shifts of some temples. Um, in South India, for example, in Tamil Nadu, uh, they are not exactly to cardinal directions, but they have a shift. Maybe because it's correlation to specific constellations as well. Anyway, so I was showing here um, also uh, another artifact that is beheaded human body. And as you see here, instead of blood dripping out, it's like snakes, nagas are coming out. It reminded me immediately about the naga cult uh, in India. And as we know, the serpent... Um, in India, 
Shesha, uh, Shiva, uh, no, it's not actually Shesha. Yeah, Shesha was in the uh, uh, myths of India as well, yeah? The huge nag. So the gods were pulling him in the different directions and his spirit, the poison, and that's why Krishna became blue, right? But anyway, so the story is, as you see here, the same, also the snakes, and they consider it as a life energy coming out from human body. That's why they did in, in those days um, sacrificials with humans. So anyway, let's move forward. So we see like four now correlations between two different cultures. And here I wanted to show you, and uh, see again, this is Naga, huge snake again here. Yeah, they worshipped it. So I made this photograph um, in the um, um, exposition where it was a um, description about the Mayan culture. And maybe somebody, you guys will read it later, but I wanted to just point out to certain important things. So the Mayan universe was divided, the Maya divided universe into four parts, four quadrants, right? In Vastu Shastra, it is the same, yeah? And in Vastu Shastra, we know there are deities uh, to each direction, and it is important because it brings you specific um, energy into your main entrance if you're building as a line to cardinal directions. So here they say also they have uh, uh, four directions and also central axis. That is Brahma Sutra. And here the uh, axis Mundi. So the same again um, correlation. And so Maya described the surface of the earth as quadra quadrangle floating on the great body of water, making the boundary of the underworld. So square. Yeah. So. Brahmarishi Mayan also taught that the square is the most important shape because it's consciousness at peace. So the buildings of square shape or rectangular shape are considered the most peaceful and they're calculated. So they also say about that, yeah. So the square is important. And they also um, basically explain the cardinal directions and colors. And I found in um, Indian, um, for example, Kala Tattva Kosha volumes, there is this uh, whole article, big article about space directions and colors. They're different, but there are also colors there. So it's very, very interesting correlation. Okay, here, this is um, Timala Katal, that is a sacrificial stone. That is also was found in uh, actual Mexico City is built on the ancient settlement and the pyramids were there and so there this incredible rock this huge stone it's sacrificial stone and is as noted in the museum it says that people by mistake think it's a calendar but that was not a calendar it was a stone for sacrificial different uh, pujas um, ceremonies and that is related to the sun deity, Surya. So here on this uh, photograph, uh, it's modern structure. It's in the center of the Archeo um, Anthropological Museum in Mexico City. It represents this axis mundi, connection between the earth, the underworld, and the heavens. So it's a very interesting cosmological approach and myths of the Mayan which actually correlate to the ancient teachings of India. Okay, so now this is the jaguar. So when we walked between the pyramids in Teotihuacan, uh, this big one right here, it's huge, that is the sun pyramid. But again, nobody knows if it's really sun and that is the moon pyramid. And nobody exactly knows that. That was just the name given to them. But uh, scientists, anthropologists, archaeologists, they definitely know that there is a connection between these pyramids and the myths related to astronomy. There are incredible underground tunnels there, and they are connected to the uh, world of the uh, cosmos and constellations. Unfortunately, uh, um, the pyramids were closed. You could not go up because of COVID 
and underground tunnels also were not included in our excursion. I'm not sure if they're open for people. So our guide said, it was a different guide here, he said they suspect that it was water here um, because it was several ancient lakes nearby and they think it, there were channels here. So we don't know exactly. But while we were talking, and it says Valley of Death, or the birth of the gods. So all these uh, little um, artists and sellers, they were trying to sell different uh, copies of artifacts. And of course it was a head of the jaguar, because he holds the knowledge, especially when the sun goes down, he basically doesn't allow negative uh, energy to come close to wisdom. So they would all blow this um, the head of the jaguar to create a sound when the jaguar is angry and he hisses and makes this, this sound. So let's do that. So the negative energy will stay away from me. That's a jaguar. Okay, so let's move forward. All right. I want to go back to this um, to the um, anthropological museum because when I went second time, I decided to make a photograph of this jade mask. It's a deaf mask of the Mayan ruler Pakal. And so uh, Jose, the guide of uh, that tour, he said it was a crazy situation. A photographer, official photographer of the museum, he actually uh, could not resist and he stole this mask. And they couldn't find it, couldn't find it. He tried to sell it on the black market, but he realized that this artifact is impossible to sell and it was dangerous actually for him. So he feared for his life and he hid this mask in the closet of his, uh, in the bedroom. So two years the mask was in the closet. And what happened to him, as he explained later, he could not sleep because mask started talking to him and he was terrified. So he was sleepless. So then he decided to tell his father truth. And his father said, hey, son, just go back to the museum. Just give it back. So he went to the museum after two years and brought back this mask. And I asked the name of this photographer. Unfortunately, I forgot it and I wanted to ask Jose, and I did ask actually, what the mask was talking about. He said, I don't know exactly, so maybe I'll find one day what the mask was telling the photographer. But anyway, so I photographed here also right hand of this um, um, ruler and his left hand and right hand. So as you see in the left hand, we have actually a jade cube pretty sizable. And again, the paramanu, the particle of energy from which the universe is constructed according to uh, Vastu Shastra is a cube. And when the cube starts spinning, when we think and uh, the consciousness actually at work, then the spin creates a change of the shape of consciousness unit. Paramanu, it becomes sphere. So it's a final stage of manifestation of invisible energy into the material world. That's why everything is spherical, earth and sun. Uh, so that is matter. So maybe, maybe I'm just again speculating here. Maybe there is a representation of this wisdom of Maya, but nobody knows. Anyway, so let's move forward. Here it's slightly different um, pick, but I wanted to, in this uh, presentation, to explain that. Because there is another fact in uh, uh, scriptures of Vastu Shastra. It says that the energy of the planet um, moves clockwise direction um, um, in the northern hemisphere and counterclock direction in the southern hemisphere. But as uh, our scientists know, if we will look from above, from the uh, north pole on the earth, at the earth, it moves counterclock direction. So, okay, so let's see what happens here. Why did I bring this to your attention? So this is the Mexico City Metropolitan Cathedral. I was there as well. As you see here, um, behind these two towers, 
It's a, a beautiful dome. It's huge, actually. The cathedral is very tall. And it has this uh, tower, which is uh, kind of uh, um, elongated going up in the cupola part of the um, and the dome of this uh, cathedral. So I made some photographs. So this photograph on the right, it shows uh, this specific dome and that cupola, this elongated cupola is right here, this opening. So it's pretty tall there and light is coming down, the cosmic energy, okay? So what they did, they attached to the center uh, line, we call it Brahma Sutra in Vastu Shastra, yeah? Uh, uh, basically a metal stream, pretty thick one, and they hung this huge pendulum. It's about probably two and a half feet, something like that, very heavy. So it was hanging there, and as you see here on, uh, on the floor, there is a touched panel, and it, it says some writing and trajectory um, of the movement of the pendulum. So the floor apparently actually slightly moving in this cathedral because um, it is uh, the center of the city and, and the Mexico City is located in the ancient lake and so the soils are not very stable and when we walked there it felt like a little slope, it was weird but the cathedral is in touch, intact and so there are no cracks so anyway what I did, I looked at the pendulum and I saw it, it was moving slight movement, so it's actually reflected the rotation of the earth and I made a video let's watch this watch carefully see how this pendulum moves which direction guess I think you are correct it's moving clockwise direction very interesting yeah the earth moves counterclock direction from the North Pole, but the pendulum moves clockwise direction according to Vastu Shastra, mm -hmm. that's the path mm -hmm. of energy. Clockwise direction, which is how it's So, um, there is an interesting fact that when uh, Spaniards came and invaded uh, Mexico, it was Mesoamerica, they started disassembling incredible pyramids. And they used stolen stones of the temple, which was there before, of Huitzilopochtli. Um, I can't pronounce that, sorry. Um, so that was Aztec's god of war. And they used these stones for the construction of the Catholic cathedral. Anyway, so that is the story um, about what was happening in uh, uh, Mexico uh, in this um, cathedrals and um, wherever I went it was something amazing every time but anyway so I just wanted to finish I wanted to make it short but I never can make it short because there is so much to share with you so I hope you enjoyed um, this presentation about my trip to Mexico and uh, to the pyramids of sun and the moon and I, I hope you're convinced because I'm convinced for a long time that there is connection between uh, Brahma Rishi Mayan teachings and his name is even you know exactly the same sounds as ancient culture of Maya and they did have very special dimensions when they built their pyramids that would be next all right well thanks so much Om Namah